All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Connor's virtual novel crawl through *A Fruit of Grisaya. Uh So I, I kind of looked over the last videos and realized I am kind of a bore. So I'm going to try to be a little more. This is kind of a, a you know first time through, so uh, I'm definitely going to try to be more animated, try to be a little more fun. It's hard stuff, especially since I'm like the worst reader ever of all time. But uh, I'm gonna do what I can and try to make this better. And uh, let's go ahead and give a quick recap of what's gone on so far. So we're Yuji Kajima, I think was his name, and uh, he, ex-military teenager or something like that, uh, decided we wanted to go to school, and they put him in school with six other students. Kind of an odd school with a lot of very elite individuals is the terminology they use specifically. So. Uh, we met a few characters, a uh, maiden named, uh, Sachi? I, I get the names confused. Uh, but we also met some other characters, uh, the principal as well. Uh, she seems to know us, but, uh, we aren't addressing the fact that she knows us from somewhere. So, we're gonna jump right back on into this and, uh, see if we can develop the story a little more. So... Although I haven't heard those names before, they must be other students. I think that's where we left off. Sachi, I was right. okay. Also, the door next to you, yours, leads to the boiler room. The stairs are the opposite. That's another thing I noticed. When I hear the voices, I keep messing up because I can't focus on reading. And further on, there are four rooms, of which the third room next to the stairs is mine. I'd heard there are 11 rooms in total. Any reason why you pick one on the first floor? Or why you pick one on the first floor? Well, as you know, my name is Sachi. Apparently, that sort of rhymes with, <laughs> with room 3. I don't get that. And so I was encouraged to. I get the idea. I don't. This is the second floor. This floor contains only personal rooms, and with the exception of myself, all the students live here. Oh, okay, so she lives on the first floor with us. Got it. Everyone else lives on the top floor. Which would mean two of these are vacant. Hi. Wow, he did a quick math back there. Cool. Yes. Room 7 and room 9 are currently unoccupied. The third floor is structured as a bathhouse, designed around this random bathhouse. Holy crap, that is an amazing bathroom. Let's see if I can... That's pretty rad. On the other side of the stairs is a laundry room and space reserved for clothes and drying racks, so please use them necessary. If doing laundry is problematic for you, please inform me, and I will be happy to take care of it on your behalf. Oh, she'll do my laundry for me. That's nice of her. Wouldn't taking care of someone else's chores be a nuisance? It's only natural for the class representative. No, it really isn't. All right. I'll keep that offer in mind. Hi. Please do. There's no reason to refuse outright when the offer is delivered with such an earnest smile. By the way, can we use the grand bathroom as we please? Hi. Yes, it's maintained periodically by a specialized contractor, so excluding cleaning, it's available 24 hours a day. Wow, they really are covering their bases when they wrote this to make sure you know that like, they, they put in the specialized contractor as well, so it's like nobody actually cleans it that's existent as a character. I, I, I'm not going to bore you guys. However, as there's no separate space for male and female bathing, I would ask you to leave this note on the entrance when you enter. As she speaks, she hands me a card that reads, in use, male bathing. Sure, I think I might take advantage of it pretty often. The view up here is pretty nice. It is indeed. There aren't any tall buildings besides the schoolhouse in the area, and window glass is 75% transparent, so it's possible to watch the sun setting into the sea. An ocean view. Huh. Not bad. If you'd like, you can give it a try right now. 
As she speaks, I notice Sachi already holding a towel and a change of clothes in her hand. You're pretty well prepared. Most people who see this ram bath are struck by the urge to give it an immediate try. I see. The fruit of your experience, is it? Ah. What's wrong? Um, instead of a change of clothes for you, I seem to have accidentally brought my own. As if to demonstrate, female underwear slips out from among the clothes in Saji's hands. Is this a declaration that you want to bathe together? Wow, that was forward. No, that wasn't my intention. I apologize. I really don't think there's anything to apologize for. Thank you. Well, that was a good and awkward moment. It's only awkward if they make it awkward, well, then, this concludes the tour of the dormitory. Do you have any questions? Let's see. Can I ask about something other than the door? Um, if it's something in my power to answer, then... In that case, let me hear your three sizes, Sachi. Yes, starting at the top, 82, 56, 83. I don't... I don't meter. I don't... Metric. How? I don't know what that means. I don't even think I really know the size. Anyway. At the moment, is there a specific man you're going out with? No, there is not. Your experience with men to date? None to speak of. Hmm. Oddly honest. Also very awkward. Thanks for trying to make it awkward, Yuji. <laughs> I know I'm the one who asked you those questions, but answering them so politely... Would that also be because you're the class representative? If class rep is only a class rep to the degree that they are of assistance to others. What an admiral, admirable... Devotion to customer service. <laughs> Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Nothing comes to mind. Very well. If there's anything else you'd like to know, please dial 3 or later on the telephone in your room. I'll be able to connect to my room. Got it. That's cool, they have their own phone. In that case, please excuse me for that. With that note of farewell, Sachi bows like a genuine housemaid and starts to turn away. Ah, Sachi? Hi. Yes? Thanks for the tour, I appreciate it. Hi. Ellipses, of course. Hmm. Class representative these days seem to be surprisingly tough willed breed. <laughs> After Sachi's tour end ended, I took another look around the interior of the building on my own. By the time I return to my room, the sun is already low in the sky and the light growing dim. I can't do this left-handed. Ah. Should probably put my stuff away before it gets dark. Opening my backpack, I pull out the contents and begin to put them away on the shelves I've been provided with. Ah. Pauses, pauses, pauses. It's a real heap that I've got a closet. Things I can leave in a visible place, and things to be stowed away in the back. Dividing my possessions between the two, the latter are clearly more <laughs> numerous. <laughs> Normal, huh? While looking over my mountain of luggage, I mutter in a self-deprecating tone. As I work, the sun sinks leisurely into the sea. How pretty. Uh, looks like we've progressed today. Woo! Teamwork, everybody. Thanks for sticking it out, Internet. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> At my usual time, 4.45 a.m., I woke up in my usual way and ran the course I'd marked down mentally on my way here. Wow, tough as nails. I, I stopped running. To tell the truth, when I was stopped by the policeman yesterday, it was because I'd been wandering back and forth in the same place. I've been planning out a possible marathon route. In other words... I woke at the usual time, ran at the usual time, and now I'm eating it at uh, eating my usual breakfast menu. No different from the days when I was living together with my master in the mountains, my standard tempo of living. Meditating under waterfalls and fighting bears, I'm sure. <laughs> if, there's, if there is a difference, it's limited to the slight surprise I felt when I opened my eyes and found a roof over my head. During my hike from Yamanashi 
Come on, I, uh, I forgot I'd gotten used to sleeping in the open. So when I woke up inside her room, there was a slight feeling of uneasiness. I thought, right, I'm living in a dorm now. That mild discomfort hasn't disappeared even now as I'm eating my corn cereal. It's hard to settle down inside a new lair. Who calls their dorm room a lair? Oh yeah, that's right, I do. If I had one. And it, until it's an ingrained with your scent. Even so, I'll start living at this temple every day from now on. Going to school every morning, so there's no real need to rush things. If I actively spend every day packing myself with potentially useful knowledge, Someday this sort of lifestyle might come naturally to me. The effort strikes me as a little troublesome, but as my master once told me, when it comes to your life and your woman, a little bit of trouble is just about right. That's true. Speaking of women, they're a simple bunch, but that doesn't make them any less difficult to handle. I learned that, is that much in my first year living with my master. In my master's words, when you're a brat, running fast is enough to make you popular. When you're, when you're a middle schooler, the guys who can fight will be popular. And after that, it's the guy with brains who gets the girls. In other words, run, punch, and read books. And you'll never run dry. What do you think? Short and sweet, right? That was her theory, at least. The things she said were always ridiculously simplistic. Honestly, I ignored those words with a snort first time I heard them, but my master was a woman who put her beliefs into practice. Every morning she made me run, and every day she hit me with a stack of books. <laughs> Although I don't know if she she's to blame, I still run 16 kilometers every morning and habitually read books whenever I have free time. 16k, 10, no, 5k is 3 miles. Is that like 10 miles? That's impressive. That's 10 miles. Uh, I'm terrible. Sometimes she was harsh, sometimes she was sweet. She would emit an abrasive, overpowering aura at times. But every once in a while, she could be so gentle that I thought my brain would melt out of my ears. That was my master, a woman with, si with a sizable belly who was nonetheless very picky about the little things. I've had a hard time dealing with large women ever since those days, but being aware of the fact doesn't mean I can fix it. It's not that I dislike them on a conscious level, but whenever I see a tall woman, I can't help but feel wary out of the pure out of pure instinct. If you ask why I'm bringing this all up all of a sudden, uh, bringing this up all of a sudden, well, that would be because I've just been reminded that there's a large woman at the school as well. Girl B, Owie, if you do it that hard, I'll break. I'll break. With a W. Hey, stop squirming. Sit still already. And spare me your... Wait. Since this place is a student dormitory, it's of course only natural that the community of students would already be living here, and it's entirely probable that they have their own rules that I don't know. Oh, my throat. Yeah, I need a little water. Also, I'm a country hick, fresh from the rural areas of Yamanashi. So it goes without saying, I'm poorly versed in the customs of, and rituals of this land. I have no way of penetrating the depths of su significance that might be hiding in the actions, in an action that, at a glance, looks to be a simple case of a simple case of bullying. <laughs> what game's this? What are the rules? Let's... Oh, those are killer uniforms. It's all too tall. Rad. Huh? A puzzled face staring back at me. Staring back at faces staring back at me are familiar. Ugh. It's the little girl slash big woman combo. I arbitrarily named the Cicada Sisters when I first arrived at the school yesterday. <laughs> um, who, are you? who do you think? I think someone proof of stupidity. That's so, I suppose that means I'm irredeemably stupid. Please call me Moron Boy, as if we've been friends for ten years, Cicada Sisters. Cicada Sisters? I saw the pair of you 
from the gate yesterday. One of you was swinging a cicada around and the other was shrieking, if I remember correctly. Can you forget that? Hmm. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, Kazama Yuji, nice to meet you. I thrust out my right hand, but the tall woman in front of me doesn't seem to show any sign of grasping it. She stiffened on the spot, staring fixedly at my face. It looks as though she's even forgotten to breathe. Something wrong? Huh? Uh. Oh, 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 the big woman's frozen expression suddenly melts as she slightly shakes my hand. It's an unexpectedly small, but decidedly cold hand. Cold. <laughs> um, Kazami Yuji? Hmm. Yuji. Yuji kun ka? Naruhodo ne? I'm Suo Su Amane. Amane. Hajime mashi te, Yuji kun? Nice to meet you, Yuji kun. Uh, yeah, Yuji kun. Girl B, ellipses. Hora, maki na. Aren't you going to introduce yourself? Why do I? In English. Iris Makina. Iris Makina? Iris is a Greek god, and it isn't Makina, a Latin word literally translated, it was be something like Mecha Rainbow Goddess. <laughs> yeah, okay. I guess that makes sense. What country are you from? <laughs> uh -huh. I might not guess it from the way it sounds, but it's I don't know. Wasn't she's speaking English. She flew around all sorts of foreign countries with her parents up until she was six years old. I see. Well, good to meet you. <laughs> Ellipses. Staring at my outstretched hand in silence, Makna clings to Amane's back, as if trying to hide herself. What's wrong? Uh, uh, sorry, this girl is pretty shy of I'm not really used to this. She spent a long time in the hospital for one day, and she hasn't met many guys around her. I think she's a little confused on how to deal with you. Hmm. I withdraw the hand I've been holding out towards Makina. There's no need to force her to deal with me. In the first... Uh, there's no need to force her to deal with me. In the first place, I guess. It's fine. So if we spoil her life, like that, that she'll never change. Come on, Magna. Come on, Magna. Come on, Magna. Come on, Magna. Ugh. Don't give me, uh... Can't manage a proper greeting and get any snacks. Is don't get any snacks. Don't get any snacks. Don't get any snacks. Is don't get any snacks supposed to be an effective threat in this day and age? Or so I thought. But hearing those words, Makina bites her lips tightly and extends her right hand towards me in strange expression. I gently clasp her small hands and put out the natural-looking fake smile I learned from my master. I'm Kazami Yuji. Good to meet you. I'm Irisu Makina. Nice to meet you. Mucha. The voice is small and marked by a distinct lisp. Her hand is as tiny as her body, and it's hot like that of a child. See? He's not so scary, right? Let's not just say hello, I'll talk to you too. What's your favorite animal? I like dogs, what about it? Hmm, I answered before the question this time. I'm not really an indecisive sort. I don't hesitate when I need to come up with an answer. Even more so when I have an important decision to make. Compared to failing without even trying, I'd rather take action. Even at the risk of a mistake. Oh, very cool. <laughs> Are you mocking me? <laughs> oh, never mind. Oh, that's a story for another time. I'm gonna save that one. Perish the thought. Then why'd you laugh? <laughs> why'd you think? 
I've heard answering a question with another question is a sign of stupidity. Oh my, I suppose that means I'm an idiot. From now on, please call me Moron Girl. Call it Moron Girl. That's cool. Oh, I'm laughing now, but say that again and it won't end well. What a troublesome woman. Oh, you're leaving already? I don't feel like being late on my first day. There's still an hour until class starts, you know? I'm used to waiting. I'll kill time sightseeing over there or something. I'm not going to say that's a bad idea, but it seems a little weird. I get that a lot. Well, I'll see you in class. Ah, Yuji, wait a second. What? What if I ask you a question as well? If it's something I can answer. Um... Well... Sorry. Never mind. If you got something to say, spit it out. No need to hold back. I'll ask you a little later, after I've gotten my thoughts together. I see. Interesting. What a char What a pair of characters we got there. Amane's kind of shifty. And the other one, no, it's just, can't get a read on her because she's too skittish. I don't understand the thought pattern of a large woman. My master would probably say, if you don't understand by now, you never will. But my own thoughts are more along the lines of, even if I could understand, why bother? Well then. Oh, should we stop here? I'm afraid to keep going, but it's been a short video, and I don't want to... Oh... Well, you know what, let's just go ahead and call it here, ladies and gentlemen, just in case. Uh, I'll just make another video, it's not a big deal. Uh, so, to recap, we met two more characters and had a whole night. Found out that he's super strict on his regimen. I don't know if that's going to come up later, if it's important or not. But, you know, it's something to note. Uh, gosh. I can't think of anything else that would make me sound like a nerd. Which I kind of am, but, you know public, you know, you get to choose who you are on the internet, so, uh, but, you know, uh, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough, or walkthrough, or crawl through, whatever I'm calling it, uh, so, join us next time, maybe we'll get a little bit more of this action, I don't know how long I want to do this before I decide whether or not it's enjoyable content, uh, but I'm, I'm definitely putting these up, because I paid for this, and I'm gonna put it up, so, more content, and you guys can just not watch it if you don't want to watch it. We'll have more stuff, though, of course, and uh, a lot more active stuff. Uh, this is just an idea to fill some gaps uh, through the week, so that way you guys don't get bored of our channel. Um, so uh, I'll see you guys next time, and uh, yeah, just keep watching, subscribe, or 